made this, and today I'll be telling you all about it. Over the last year I've been having a great time playing DM Scotty's Easy 6 and while I love fantasy, my favorite settings tend to be dark and gritty. I'm also a big history nerd, so I combined the two into The Four Horsemen, an Easy 6 playset for pulp historical and dark fantasy role-playing, set in the period of the Thirty Years' War. That's early 1600s. If you're a fan of the Three Musketeers, this one should be right up your alley. I picked the time period because it's a very chaotic time in European history, and with so much going on there are tons of stories to be told. Most of the world is known and reasonably connected at this time, so we can play characters from pretty much any background or ethnicity you like, as long as they're human. Although if you want to play a party of samurai or first nations warriors out in western Europe, you might need some uh, suitably convincing backstory. Now, I did provide the timeline of the Thirty Years War in the book, but I kept it at a very high level, because I wanted to focus on the rules, free and the gameplay. This is not a history book. Sure, historical events are described and they are correct to the best of my research, but it's not the right book if you're trying to cram for a history exam tomorrow. You'll fail. In terms of rules, the Four Horsemen builds on the easy six score rules. So if you already have a game or two under your belt, you should easily have the basics down. The main change here is that there is no karma in the playset. Instead, it uses the stress rules from DM Scotty's Easy Dead Six Horror Rules. In brief, instead of spending karma to boost a die roll, like you do in the core rules, you can take a point of stress to do the same thing, but if you stack up too much stress, you will suffer a strike of damage. Karma works great for big heroic adventures, but I find that stress fits the gritty and dangerous atmosphere I was going for so much better. During the playtests, players were being even more cautious than usual, and the choice to take a point of stress was never an easy one. The second big change is that players do not get any kind of magic. You can play the Four Horsemen as a dark fantasy with supernatural elements, but magic should always be mysterious and threatening. The Conjurer, Skald, Beastmaster and Friar didn't really fit in with the setting, so uh, they were taken out. It's up to you as a rebel rouser whether you want to include magical treasures, but you should definitely sprinkle them in very lightly. In Easy D6 score, players can pop potions of healing like candy, but here a potion that can practically take you from death's door to full health would be a very rare and incredibly valuable wonder. Now, you might be thinking that the life expectancy of characters in the Four Horsemen is significantly lower than your regular Easy D6 characters. And you wouldn't be completely wrong. While all characters survived the playtest, each game ended up with at least one character hanging on by the skin of their teeth. The greatest difference is healing time, which can force some hard choices on players. Players still heal you out faster than uh, real world people. Uh, Kirurgeon and uh, Good Night's Rest can get someone back on their feet really quick. If they do need to act fast though, things can get very dicey. Let's say that a party gets into a fight and ends up pretty badly beaten up, but they discover that something bad will go down tomorrow in the next time over. In the core rules, they could just magic up some healing and rush over, good as new. In the Four Horsemen, they're going to have to decide whether to take the risk and go over with the resources depleted, or take a rest to restore some of their energy and risk being late for the big event. If you mix in disease, which can leave a player impaired for days, your players will have to do a fair bit of thinking. That said, I did modify the armor system slightly so that any character can wear any armor. Heavy armor is no longer the exclusive province of the warrior. Heavy armor and shields do restrict some of the abilities of the rascal path, but they're still able to use them if they want to. I have also introduced rules for masterwork weapons and armor that give extra boons when used, to give the characters that little extra edge, but of course they can also be used against them. Speaking of weapons, the Four Horsemen also includes rules for firearms like muskets and pistols. Both of these have an improved critical chance and can cause devastating damage, although they can blow up in the hands of extremely unlucky shooters. They also have a very slow reloading rate, so you need to be very tactical in how and when you use them because you're not likely to get many shots in a fight. Weaponry is all well and good, but it's not very useful if you can't get around, so I've added rules for horses and horse quality. You get three levels of quality, with better trained horses being easier to control and less likely to panic. Mastering the art of horsemanship allows your characters to deliver devastating cavalry charges, so you really want to take care of your mount. Or, you know, you could uh, just hire someone to look after it, using the rules for lackeys. You have the coin, you can easily find followers who will look after your mount, get your stuff, cook your food, and do whatever tasks your character can't be bothered to do for themselves. One last thing I'd like to touch upon is the list of aspects. I think aspects are criminally underutilized, so I hope the list in the four horsemen will provide some inspiration for their use. They're mostly social or occupational aspects and come with suggested boons and role-playing hints. Obviously, you don't have to use these, but having some aspects along these lines helps uh, fit your character in the world. I rounded off the book with two adventures. The first one, A Rough Night in Stalbrook, gets the players involved in a dangerous plot. 
The second one, The Beast of Hamlin, introduces some supernatural elements to the game. They can be played as standalones or in sequence, but either way my playtesters and I had a great time playing through them, so I hope you'll find them equally entertaining. If all this sounds interesting to you, you can find the Four Horsemen on drive to rpg in PDF and softcover. Links are in the description below. Let me know what you think, and have a great week. Bye!